been years since Fawn Mountain of Altoona has gone missing, and her family still doesn't have any answers as to what happened to their daughter or where she is. Today I'll be going over everything we know about the disappearance of Fawn Marie Mountain. Fawn Marie Mountain was last seen in November of 2012. At the time she was in a relationship with a woman named Heather. Together they lived in a trailer in Claysburg, Pennsylvania. Heather's brother Mike lived in the same trailer park with his girlfriend Stephanie. They quickly developed a pretty close relationship. On November 25th, both couples went to Heather and Mike's parents' shop. There they helped Heather's parents clean up their butcher shop and prepare for the upcoming hunting season. When they finished cleaning Fawn, Heather, Mike, and Stephanie had a few drinks before heading back to their trailer park together. They stopped at Mike's trailer first so Heather could help Mike unload something from his car. Fawn and Stephanie stayed in the car and made small talk. It was at this time that Fawn told Stephanie she planned to go home watch a scary movie and just relax before going to bed. When Heather and Mike came back the two couples called it a night and headed back to their homes. The following morning Heather's parents came by to pick her for work at the butcher shop. When the parents pulled up to Heather's trailer they noticed Heather outside smoking with no Fawn. They asked Heather where Fawn was and she said she had run away in the middle of the night. Heather went about her day as the suspicions grew. Specifically Stephanie's suspicions. Heather normally went crazy over Fawn running away and would immediately go looking for her. But she didn't this time. Fawn also didn't take anything from their trailer before allegedly running away. She didn't even grab a coat. And let's remember it was in November, in Pennsylvania, and supposedly the middle of the night. What increased suspicion was that Heather didn't reach out to any of Fawn's family or friends to let them know she ran away or to ask them if Fawn had reached out to any of them or if she was with a relative. When she went missing, her girlfriend Heather, didn't go looking for her or seemed to even care that she was missing. Instead she immediately remodeled their trailer home, moved out of state, and started dating another woman. It seems like the girlfriend clearly has something to do with this right? Well, turns out Fawn had filed a restraining order against her mom just before she disappeared. Although it was shocking, it made it more confusing to figure out what happened to Fawn. All of these are major red flags. It happened way too fast for a lot of people. Especially Stephanie. She eventually called Fawn's mom Dorothy to check on Fawn because she had a feeling something had happened to her. To Stephanie things were definitely not adding up. Dorothy finally tried to report her daughter as missing but surprisingly the police took Heather's word instead and just assumed that Fawn ran away and that she was fine. Fawn grew up in a very broken home. Her parents were constantly fighting. Sadly she was physically and sexually violated at a young age by several people in her life. Despite all of her trauma Fawn tried to remain positive. She is described as outgoing, adventurous, cheerful, friendly, and kind by most people. Unfortunately she struggled in relationships, she had serious trust issues for understandable reasons. The guys she often went out with were scumbags who treated her like trash. One of these abusive guys got her pregnant on two separate occasions. She gave birth to both babies but lost custody of them because she struggled with getting a job and functioning as an adult who needed to be responsible for two babies. Her kid's father really messed her up both physically and mentally. It broke her down. Fawn lost all self-worth and she was at her lowest of lows. Repeating the same pattern, she fell back into dating terrible men and Fawn got pregnant for a third time with a baby girl named Kaden. Unfortunately Kaden was stillborn. This crushed Fawn. Fawn and Heather met in 2009 at a local bar. Up until that point Fawn had only dated men but ended up starting a romantic relationship with Heather. The relationship took off and she spent every waking minute with Heather. She also moved in with her pretty quickly. Oddly when Fawn told her mom she was moving in with Heather she told her she'd never be back to their hometown Altoona. Her mother Dorothy thought this was an odd thing to say because Altoona was only a 20 mile drive from where she was moving with Heather. Over time Heather changed. She became very possessive of Fawn. Heather dragged Fawn along to everywhere she went, even if it meant leaving her locked in the car while she was at work. Fawn wasn't allowed to hang out with friends, get a job, or have a cell phone. Heather manipulated Fawn into believing that all of this was for her safety and well-being. Then the physical abuse started. Fawn went to the hospital several times for injuries which raised eyebrows but as soon as social workers and nurses started asking questions Heather would switch up the hospital. Fawn soon started to realize how horrible Heather was to her. Before she disappeared, Fawn tried to run away several times but Heather would always find her and force her home. In 2011 Fawn filed a restraining order against her mom Dorothy. 
It was out of nowhere and Dorothy was in shock. She didn't always have the greatest relationship with her daughter, especially considering her upbringing. But they'd recently been doing well so why would Fawn file for a restraining order all of a sudden? But then she found out it wasn't her daughter who filed for the restraining order, it was Heather. Further digging revealed a few of Heather's past girlfriends had restraining orders against her due to abuse. Heather continued to isolate Fawn from the outside world. Dorothy was really the only other person in her life aside from Heather. With the new order, there was really nothing she could do. She wasn't able to see her mom. She didn't have friends or a job. She had nothing that brought her joy other than her conversations with Stephanie through the window. But it wasn't long until Heather caught on this and boarded up the windows. Isn't that insane? I can't imagine being in her shoes. In November of 2012 Fawn ran away to her mom's house. Heather quickly found her and called the police on Dorothy for breaking the restraining order. Dorothy was arrested and sent to jail for two days. Dorothy was very worried about her daughter's safety but she felt like there was nothing she could do. She asked the police to do welfare checks. Tragically, it wasn't too long after this last runaway attempt that Fawn went missing. In a strange turn of events, Fawn wasn't officially reported missing until 2015. That's three years after she went missing. Her relatives kept trying to contact her and they tried to see her in person but they had no idea she had been missing for three years. After some digging they learned Fawn was still receiving welfare checks to Heather's trailer so they decided to call the Social Security office to make a report. The Social Security office sent out a letter to Fawn for a mandatory appointment. She failed to appear. This was what got the ball rolling and the police finally started taking Fawn's disappearance seriously. Well at least that's what the family was hoping. Unfortunately they only filed a missing persons report but failed to follow up with anyone, conduct any searches, or put any real effort into looking for Fawn. Her cousin Bridget fell out of touch as they grew up and Bridget didn't find out about the disappearance until 2017. Bridget knew she had to do something to help find her cousin. She reached out to Stephanie to get more information and started nagging the police about the case. Bridget and Stephanie put on their detective hats and started to bring attention to her case by helping to spread the word and trying to piece everything together. The women reached out to all of the people in Fawn's life to ask questions. No one could remember specifics but mentioned doing an interview with the police a few years ago. Bridget and Stephanie reached out to the police to see if they could get their interviews but the police said they lost the recordings. The person responsible was fired. The downfall was that no one had been assigned to take over Fawn's case. The police were completely lazy and disrespectful towards Fawn's situation. In August Bridget finally got the state involved and it seemed like the authorities finally had their act together. Five years too late, a reward was posted. Heather was evicted from the trailer park and the grounds of the trailer park were searched but nothing came from this. Bridget started a Facebook group to spread the word of Fawn's disappearance. To this day we don't know if she's alive but most people assume she is not. Dorothy seemed a little sketchy because of the restraining order, but we now know that Heather was the one who filed for it. It's suspicious that Dorothy didn't contact the rest of her family about Fawn vanishing but several reports and videos say she has a cognitive deficit that was likely the reason why. But as for Heather, she's looking more and more suspicious. Heather remodeled their trailer home shortly after Fawn went missing, redoing the floors and everything this leads me to believe that she was covering up something. And then moving to Ohio and dating a girl? I can't look past that. Another element of all is that Heather's family sold their butcher shop a few months after Fawn's disappearance. All of their equipment and tools were sold as well. Was this a cover-up? Heather also lied several times about the whereabouts of Fawn. First she claimed that she ran away, then said she was in prison in Arizona, and later told someone else that she was in prison in Ohio. I mean nothing is adding up. It's really disappointing that no major advancements have been made in a case that is over 10 years old. I hope that this video brings new traction on the case and we can finally get down to the bottom of what happened to Fawn. We deserves justice for Fawn. Do you think that Fawn is still out there? If not, who do you think is responsible and what do you think really happened? Please be mindful in the comments as this is a real person with mourning friends and family who may see it. Please share this video to inform more people. Thank you so much for watching another episode of True Crime Memoirs with Nurse T. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.